Okay. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. If you're not having a wonderful day, I hope you make it the best day you possibly can. But if you're allowed to wake up in the morning, make that day the best day possible. Stay positive and just Just be a good person because negativity is a horrible thing. But with that being said, I don't know. We're going to look at the, the weirdest rules in the world that will blow your mind. So... I reckon I'm from, you know, the South, so I know my constitutional rights and shit like that. But I know other countries don't have rights. So I want to see what the weirdest rules in the world that will blow your mind are going to be very interested, very curious, and I'm very curious as to what I will end up saying during this video, but don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to, and the link to this video will be in the description below, of course, but... Yeah. Hello everyone! If you're planning a trip to a country you've never been to before, it's a good idea to study local laws before that. Yes, the basic rules are the same all over the world. You can't take things that aren't yours, you can't fool other people, you can't fight, you can't hurt animals. But certain laws established in certain countries may seem strange, if not absurd. Most of the time, each of these interdictions has its own history, but this doesn't make them any less surprising. So, what exactly can't be done in some parts of our planet? We're going to find out. Let's get it on. Dying the Norwegian city of Longyearbyen is located in the polar archipelago of Svalbard in the Arctic Ocean. Svalbard is an area with a special status, so there are many particularities here. But what is happening in Longyearbyen is much more interesting. It's the northernmost settlement in the world, with more than 1,000 permanent residents. It's cold here too. You can observe the polar day and the polar night, and you'll barely meet people over 66. And it's forbidden to die. If you're old or suddenly falls serious night, and you'll barely meet people over 66, and it's forbidden to die. If you're old or suddenly fall seriously ill, and there's a danger that you won't be able to cope with the disease, you'll probably be sent to Oslo as soon as possible. Yes, so that you can live out your last days there. It sounds creepy and somehow unpleasant. At the very least, if death suddenly strikes a man in Longyearbyen, the body will be removed from the city. The small town cemetery stopped receiving newcomers in 19. 50 when it discovered that the bodies weren't decomposing and this
suddenly strikes a man in Longyearbyen, the body will be removed from the city. The small town cemetery stopped receiving newcomers in 1950 when it discovered that the bodies weren't decomposing. And this is a much more serious problem than it seems at first glance. In 1918, the Spanish flu epidemic ravaged the city and claimed many lives. The dead were buried, but more than 30 years later, it turned out that the permafrost had preserved their bodies. That means that a dangerous virus, which in the 20th century destroyed 5% of the world's population. All right. Do I need to go on my conspiracy theory bag? No, I reckon I won't. I won't open that up to y'all, but... Yeah, that... Anything that's frozen in the ice... I don't give a fuck. Oh, Sam talking about any of this. So fuck it. Anything that's frozen in the eyes, I don't care how fucking long. If it gets released, humans are weak nowadays. They don't have an immune system. They take a drug for every fucking thing. So which in the 20th century destroyed 5% of the world's population, has also survived. Since then, it's been formally forbidden to die, or rather to bury the dead in Longyearbyen. However, this is not the only strange local law. There's a ban on cats too, there's restrictions on the amount of alcohol, and there's a requirement that anyone who goes out on the street carries a rifle. Polar bears often come to visit. Witchcraft the times of the Inquisition are long gone, but Canada still prohibits witchcraft. Okay, not exactly doing witchcraft, but pretending to do witchcraft. We don't know what sounds stranger though. Witchcraft is dealt with in Article 365 of the Criminal Code of Canada. It says that you're guilty of a crime if you do any of the following things. Pretend to cast spells, pretend to tell fortunes, and wait for it, pretend to find a lost object or person with the help of a cult form. Forces. And it's no coincidence that we repeat the word pretend. Apparently, if you're a real witch or sorcerer and you don't just pretend, there's no punishment. However, if you fake it, you can expect a small prison sentence. Wait, then how is. So. Being a witch is fucking. How the fuck are you gonna say if they're a real or fake? Like, it's all fucking fake. It's like wrestling. Like that we repeat the word pretend. Apparently, if you're a real witch or sorcerer and you don't just pretend, there's no punishment. However, if you fake it, you can expect a small prison sentence. Wait, then how is Halloween celebrated in this country? Perhaps part of this law exists to protect people from charlatans and various psychics, but the fact remains. It seems that there was a proposal to lift the ban in 2018, but it didn't go any further going to the bathroom after 10 p.m. Yes, and you can't take a shower either. This is the kind of ban that applies to old apartment buildings. Do what? People from shower and various psychics, but the fact remains. It seems that there was a proposal to lift the ban in 2018, but it didn't go any further. Going to the bathroom after 10 p.m. Yes, and you can't take a shower either. This is the kind of ban that applies to old apartment buildings in Switzerland. In addition, this law is really observed, and you can be declared to the police for its violation. But what is... See, our noise ordinance here is 11 o'clock p.m which I fully respect. But starting this YouTube channel, I only work usually between 8 p.m. till 8 a.m. because that's usually when it's the quietest in my apartment complex. 
That way I don't have to worry about so much excess noise. So you're telling me I can't go take a piss and flush the toilet after 10 p.m.? I can't even flush the toilet? God damn. Like, I get mad when fuckers screaming. The area outside when I'm trying to record and shit, so. Is the reason for this restriction? Well, it's all because of the noise. When the water is flush from the toilet, there's a terrible roar, which is able to wake up the neighbors who've already gone to bed. It's exactly the same story with the bath. Of course, you can take a quick shower, but you won't be able to splash about in the bathtub, because when you run the bath, there's a lot of noise, and it exceeds the time set for silence, from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. Most often, however, these bands are local. Okay, so there are no ways to order is 10 p.m. I didn't think that included flushing your toilet or taking a shower. Like, I'm up all night. I sleep during the day, so I definitely couldn't live in Switzerland, most houses are rented. That's why there are several homeowners associations that set their own rules for tenants, so they may have this strange bathroom ban. By the way, in recent years, Swiss manufacturers of discharge valves are developing exceptionally quiet models. These toilets can be used at any time of day, even if you have very grumpy neighbors. Chewing gum. Nom, 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 nom. You've probably... But if you get woke up by a fucking... Toilet? And you complain about it? Like, what are you doing with your life? Like, you live next to somebody. You don't have your own personal space. If you want your own personal space, go buy your house and have your own personal space. Like, If you live in like an apartment or a community or whatever, that's just shit you have to deal with. You have to work around it. Like, I know everybody around here. I know there's, I don't know them personally. I've never spoke to any any one of them, except for the guy who lives below me. I know him, but everybody else, I know their schedule because I pay attention. So you know when they leave in the morning, you know when they get up in the morning, you know when they come home in the evening. Like, just be aware of your own personal surroundings. Like, Don't be a fucking douchebag. Chewing gum. You've probably heard about this prohibition that applies in Singapore, but not only can't you chew gum there, it's also forbidden to buy or bring it into the country. Except for the special medical gum, like nicotine gum for quitters and dental gum, they can only be bought in pharmacies. Otherwise, gum is strictly forbidden, and it can cost you some large fines. Why? Well, if you think about it, the reasons are quite logical. It's difficult and also expensive to scrape it off the floor, walls, bus seats, and other places where it's usually put. It's yeah, but it's also not as hard just to, if you chew gum, I don't eat sweets. I don't use shit like that, but put it in the fucking trash can. Like, 
seats and other places where it's usually put, it's much easier to ban it than to spend money on this kind of work. Another reason came with the opening of the subway. Shortly after its launch, the hooligans found a great way to have fun. They stick it to the sensors on the automatic doors, which of course caused them to fail. In the end, the authorities concluded that chewing gum caused more problems than benefits and banned it altogether. And it seems to work. The subway doors no but most people who chomp fucking chewing gum like that or <sighs> no, I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to be respectful in this video. Positively on that. Just don't be that. Authorities concluded that chewing gum caused more problems than benefits and banned it altogether. And it seems to work. The subway doors no longer break and you don't step on anything sticky while walking. Taking photographs. The Alpine villages are practically made for photographs and for putting them on social networks afterwards, but it's not legal everywhere. Thus, the Swiss municipality of Bergen introduced a ban on photography in 2017. Each troublemaker will be fined $5. How do you plead? Defense noted. However, the ban doesn't apply to citizens who photograph from their precincts, nor to wedding photos, nor to photos taken from the car of a passing train. But what is the point of such a law? Well, the answer is simple. It's an advertisement. It really is. According to the authors of the prohibition, scientists have shown that photographs with beautiful views make people unhappy. This statement applies to those who can't go to this place and experience poverty. positive emotions in reality. And Bergen is really a wonderful place in every way, similar to the decorations of fairy tales. Therefore, it's better to visit it in person rather than see photos of other people. Yes, it's very strange logic indeed. There are even signs of a ban on photography throughout the village. Did it help tourists and those who couldn't come to Bergen? Who knows? Traveling back in time. Or rather, it's forbidden to show films that include time travel. That law was passed in China in 2011. Representatives of the Central Bureau of Film, Radio and Television said that most of the stories in those films are fictitious and distort historical realities. See, censorship... I don't know why it looks blurry. But censorship, people, like... They tell you what they want you to know. They try to force feed the information they want you to consume. Twenty eleven. Representatives of the Central Bureau of Film, Radio and Television said that most of the stories in those films are fictitious and distort historical realities. Come on, who would have thought? However, the Chinese authorities were very picky about the film's inaccuracies. In their opinion, such projects are not worth encouraging because they support superstition and almost undermine the state system. Well, who would have thought that any Back to the Future or X-Men could be so dangerous? Interrupt a wedding. Do you remember this technique which was often used in old movies? A heroine marries someone, and the priest says, Speak now or forever hold your peace. And then the hero breaks into the church and shouts, I object! He goes down the aisle to say that he really loves the heroine and, ah, how romantic. Well, in South Australia, it's forbidden to do that. And it's no joke. You can't interrupt a wedding or a funeral here. And the pro Prohibition is prescribed by law. According to it, anyone who deliberately obstructs a wedding or funeral ceremony is guilty of a crime and is liable to a maximum penalty of a $10,000 fine. And in some cases, it can cost you two years of life behind bars. The prohibition applies to all ceremonies, both secular and religious. Stopping on a motorway without gasoline. German highways are a place where there are special rules and they're. Yes. Germany is very special. And in some cases, it can cost you two years of life behind bars. The prohibition applies to all ceremonies, both secular and religious. 
stopping on a motorway without gasoline. German highways are a place where there are special rules, and they're quite unexpected. All motorways have special recreation areas. There's also an emergency lane where you can stop in case of failure. So far, everything sounds quite logical, and that's right. But if you run out of petrol on the motorway and suddenly stop, you will be fined. This is because traffic on these roads is very fast, and stopping can cause a serious accident. And the fact that you don't have any petrol won't be a mitigating factor. After all, you are the driver and should be responsible for such things. Playing with snowballs. I mean, I reckon they're talking about the autobahn, which I know here recently, like a lot of the fucking autobahn has been restricted to speeds, but you're not allowed to drive in the left lane at any time unless you're passing a car, because you're allowed to run 200 plus miles an hour. But there's so many fucking stupid people who just, it's really not that hard to drive that fast. People just don't know how to do it. Like, can cause a serious accident, and the fact that you don't have any petrol won't be a mitigating factor. After all, you are the driver and should be res Oh, that's right, the whole petrol thing is. Yeah, if you run out, fuck all. Responsible for such things. Playing with snowballs. <laughs> We guess in every country where it snows, kids are free to play with snowballs. Sometimes adults do too, all over the world, except in the American city of Severance in Colorado, because here, almost a century ago, this fun game was banned. It sounds like a lie, but that law really existed. It appeared in a regulation that forbode throwing stones and other things at people and their properties, such as cars. Harmless snowballs also fall under this definition. The first references to Severance date back to 1920. The ban on snowballing was almost as old as the city itself, and for many years, no one even tried to change it. Fortunately, the younger generation may think differently. In October 2018, a boy named Dane Best was in an excursion in a city hall along with his classmates. The mayor began telling the school children about the strange laws. He also mentioned the snowball ban. However, the authorities never insisted on enforcing the ban. In addition, the mayor of Severance didn't even know how to punish the offenders. Overall, the law seemed completely meaningless, and Dane Best decided to fix the situation. A nine-year-old boy collected two dozen signatures from his classmates to support him and prepared a five-minute presentation. And what were you doing when you were nine? In his presentation, he explained in detail why the city authority should lift the ban. The boy called the law obsolete and stressed that children living in severance, like children around the world, should have the opportunity to play with snowballs. And Dane succeeded. A meaningless law that lasted a century was was abolished, and the mayor even gave the stu- Man. You gotta let kids be kids. Like... Kids aren't kids nowadays. Like, all they have is- I mean, I love my fucking cell phone. All they have is their fucking cell phone and their social media. You can't even throw a fucking snowball. Like, goddamn, we can't even throw fists anymore. When I was growing up, we used to throw fucking hands. Like, it. Wow. A snowball is considered, well, they changed it, so 
good for them. For that, I reckon. He signatures from his classmates to support him and prepared a five minute presentation. And what were you doing when you were nine? In his presentation, he explained in detail why the city authority should lift the ban. The boy called the law obsolete and stressed that children living in severance, like children around the world, should have the opportunity to play with snowballs. And Dane succeeded. A meaningless law that lasted a century was abolished, and the mayor even gave the student a special snowballing device. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the Alright, I reckon that's the end of the video. So I'll go ahead and end it there. The weirdest rules in the world that will blow your mind. Yeah. Several can the fuck out of me like I don't I don't understand but they are from different countries so they have different rules and regulations from what I know so of course it's going to confuse me but well at the end of the day we're all still the human race, so I don't see why we all can't just be one. But I reckon that's just a stupid concept, because that's just not how the world works. But that's how I like to think. Personally. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. This link will be in the description below. This might be my last video for tonight just because I don't know. I might find something else that'll put me in a little bit better of a mood, but... The negativity and the way people try to divide just pisses me off. And I don't like it. But with that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Just, yeah.